Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a 3D scan of this house, which is under construction. It locates in the Pattaya area on the east of Thailand. All the workers are out for lunch, so it's a good opportunity to do a 3D scan while there is no one around. Okay, look at here. Somebody just put a column in the center of the exit way. This is very unusual. My target is on the rooftop on the third floor but I'll make a 3D scan on the second floor as well so that I can get the location of the concrete beam under the floor Here's my 3D scan location uh, This is quite an open area with a low feature short walls and no ceiling It could be uh, difficult for tracking Let's get started The equipment that I use is called a Slam LiDAR Scanner this one is a FJD Trion S1 from FJ Dynamics. The equipment on the right is the computer and the battery pack that I will strap on my shoulder. And here is the LiDAR unit that I need to connect it to the computer. To be able to get a display and control of the 3D scanner, I need to connect uh, my phone uh, through the Wi-Fi. The scanner comes with an app that I can use for viewing the scan data and it also has an indicator the green dot on the top of the screen that will change the color when it start to lose the track like this one change into orange color that I have to turn myself into a direction with a high feature this uh, radar scanner will emit the laser beam uh, 300,000 points in one second and it will shape like a sphere so it will scan everything in a spherical volume I may cut out on the area where the operator is standing. The detection range of this scanner is 120 meters, so it can detect the object uh, very far away in all weather conditions, either sunshine or completely dark. The scanner also can connect to a GPS receiver for better accuracy and scanning in an open area. But in this project, we do uh, indoor scanning, so I don't need it. And this is a slam lighter, so I need to return to the starting point for error correction. So more on that later. Okay, this is just a demonstration. Next, I will do a full house scan in one single loop. Okay, this is the starting point on the third floor. I will walk in the loop and come back here to finish the scan. Many times I have to walk backwards so that I can face the feature in front of me. Before I enter the room, I will wait for the scanner to scan inside and outside of the room before I go in. The Slam LiDAR scanner has a sensor called IMU, the Inertia Measurement Unit. So it will detect the movement of the scanner in all six axes. This is how it knows the position of the scanner in space. But with the longer travel I made, the more drifting error it will cause from this sensor. So by going back to the starting point, the scanner will use a SLAM algorithm to correct the drifting error and keep it down under 20 millimeters, which is good enough for most construction work. If the scanning area is very large and I feel tired, I can stop the scan. Then I can come back and start where I left off the scanner will automatically merge the scans together. Now I have walked for 6 minutes and 135 meters. The glass wall never been an issue for this 3D scanner. Only the miller that can cause the problem. So glass is fine if there are not too many. But a lot of miller is bad for the scanner. Okay, now I'm exiting the room and completing the scan. 200 meters of travel in 8.4 minutes scanning the whole house in 8.4 minutes all the floors walls and the ceilings all captured this is the fastest method to survey the building okay this is fj the Tryon model the software that comes with a scanner i'm uh, remapping the point cloud using the slam algorithm I can also do this by using the computer that comes with a scanner without using this software but it will take a very long time. Now uh, my CPU is running 
at all costs 100% of uh, CPU usage. So this step requires a very powerful uh, computer. The white dot that you see is the trajectory of the 3D scanner. I can also import the point cloud directly without the SLAM process, but the accuracy is not reliable. So uh, remapping the point cloud in the computer is uh, necessary. So this is the scanning result. Uh, I have about 43 million points of the point cloud. My current CAD software with the hardware that I'm using can handle uh, up to about 100 million points. If I look at the side view, I can clearly see the floor and the beam under the floor. I can use this point cloud for a tracing for a 2D floor plan, section or elevation of the building, or I can use it for remodeling. This is the first floor section. This is the second floor section. And this is the third floor section, which I will use to demonstrate uh, uh, making the floor plan in this video. The only way that you can bring Point Cloud into Autodesk software products, you need to use Autodesk Recap. I export the Point Cloud from the scanner as the LES format and do the conversion here. I can adjust the position of the origin point. I can also make a separate floor sections and put it into layers so that when I use it in Autodesk Inventor or AutoCAD, I can turn on and turn off each floor easily. Uh, next to this, I will export this um, project so that AutoCAD can uh, open this point cloud. In AutoCAD, I will click on Manage and then Attach button and then I choose the RCP files. Click on OK and then the point clouds will be imported into AutoCAD. I also can select the individual layer that I made in the recap. So I will just turn on the third floor layer. There is also a crop tool that you can crop just the point cloud that you need to work on. My next process is that I will align, I will draw a horizontal line and then I will align the wall to this uh, horizontal line uh, by using a uh, rotate and move command. Uh, next to that is an easy part. I just trace the line along the point clouds for the walls and the location of the door. Next, I will turn on the layer that contains the beam under the floor and I will start to draw the center line of the beam. Then I will just uh, trim all the lines and give it a dimension. And the work is done. Now I have a floor plan drawing with the center line of the concrete beam under it. So that I can use this for uh, developing the design of the tensile structure canopy. Okay, thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.